This problem comes from a recent video by Matt Parker. He has a YouTube channel called Stand Up Maths. Really excellent, entertaining, fun videos about mathematics. I have changed it a little bit, but the essence of the problem is pretty much what he went through in his video. And I found it such an interesting problem that I wanted to make a video on it myself. I hope that he doesn't have a problem with that, and I hope that you don't have a problem with that. If you do, please let me know. So the problem is that we have two pulleys. Uh, on the lower pulley, we have two weights attached by a string. One of the weights is 5 grams, the other weight is 120 grams. This lower pulley is attached by a string to another pulley, and that is attached to a weight of 20 grams. And all of the weights are held in place, and the question is, what will happen when we release the weights? Will this 20 gram weight go up or down? And also we're assuming that the pulleys are frictionless and that the, the string is has no weight and it's not stretchy. So what do you think? Will the 20 gram weight go up or will it go down? The answer is that the 20 gram weight would actually begin to go down. Now, depending on how long this string is and how far it is from the ground will depend on how far this weight actually moves down uh, because these weights would be moving fairly quickly, right? Because 120 grams is much heavier than 5 grams, it's going to pretty much shoot straight down and this weight won't have much time to move down, but initially it would go down. So how can we figure out what would happen to this weight? Well, we have to figure out the tension force in this string first on the lower pulley. How can we figure that out? Well, we can examine the forces acting on these weights. Well, firstly, we have a tension force, and that's going to be equal on both sides. Also, we have acceleration, which is going to be acting down, or sorry, force, the net force, which is mass times acceleration, and on the five gram weight, that will be acting up, so the direction of movement, and then we have the weight of each weight, uh, each mass I should say, and that is pulling towards the ground. So this is the tension force, this is the net force, and this is weight, so mass times the gravitational acceleration g. Not meaning grams, meaning g. <laughs> okay, then this is the same as the tension force over here, and this is 120. G. So looking at the 5 gram weight, this net force, F, will equal the tension pulling up in the direction of movement, subtract the weight pulling down, so 5G. Again, G standing for gravitational acceleration, not grams. And also because we know F equals MA, mass times acceleration, we know that the net force will be its mass, 5, times its overall acceleration, whatever that is. We don't know what that is, let's just use A. The net force on the 120 gram weight, F, will be 120 G in the direction of movement, subtract the tension force in the opposite direction of movement. So subtract T this time, and this equals 120 A. Now, A in both equations is the same because they're going to have the same acceleration because they're attached by a string. This allows us to solve these equations simultaneously for T. Now, you can do this in a couple of ways. You could subtract them or arrange in terms of A. So let's arrange these equations in terms of A. I find this slightly more straightforward, but you know, feel free to do it differently if you like. Arranging this equation for A. So let's call this equation one. Equation 1 would be A equal to T minus 5G on 5. Equation 2 would be 120G take T on 120 equals A. And then setting these two equal to each other, we have T take 5G on 5 equal to 120G take T on 120. Simplifying, we could multiply this side by 120, then we get 120 divided by 5, which is 24. So this would be 24t subtract uh, 120g equals 120g minus t, and then we get 25t equal to 240g, and then t equals 
240 divided by 25 is 9.6, 9.6 G. So that is the tension force here on each part of the string, so 9.6 G. And that means that the tension force from this pulley is twice that, so 9.6 times 2, which is 19.2 G. Then looking at this mass, the tension force is going to be equal to its weight. So its weight is 20 G, so its tension force is 20 G, which is greater than the tension force on this side. So this weight or this mass would actually pull down and pull this pulley up once released. I would love to confirm this with an experiment like Matt Parker did in his video. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have pulleys and weights lying around, but if you do, then hopefully this is what would happen. You would release these weights, this one would shoot down to the ground, and this weight would briefly move down and pull this pulley up. So there you go, a bit of a pulley puzzle there. What do you think? Is that sort of counterintuitive? Did you get the correct answer? Let me know. Uh, please leave a like if you did find this interesting. Subscribe if you want to see more content and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.